very good afternoon to you, our cherished listeners. We bring you yet another exciting edition of your favorite business development program on Radio Masterclass. Masterclass is powered by Joy Business and brought to us by Goyle. Goyle, they say good energy, Goyle. Yenara, Yedia. We're still in the month of September, 16th of September it is. Still in the ninth month of the year, and like I always say, we're prodding on gradually. If there's anything that you want to do as a business, as an individual, you wrote something down 31st of December last year as your New Year's resolution. COVID or no COVID, the year is coming to an end. Like I always say, morning will come, night will come. It will not wait for any man. Time and tide waits for no man. So just do it. Get up and just do what it is you're doing. We welcome you to today's edition of Masterclass. We're starting at 1.30 and run all the way through to 2.15 here on the Superstation. Do keep your dial locked here and join this conversation. I'm happy to have back in the studio with me in this conversation my wonderful resource person who's been sharing some wonderful thoughts. I got some great reviews from our show last week. Maoli, you're welcome back to the show. Thank you for having me again. It's always <laughs> exciting to have you. It's always exciting to have you. Yeah. And, and, and just, just by way of feedback, some of the things that we shared last week were wonderful. They were yeah. practical. They helped people in their businesses a lot. We got a lot of feedback, and uh, we're looking forward to another exciting show today. Okay. And like I always say, I want us to get interactive. I want to give you as much time as possible to get the stuff out there so that people can relate it to their businesses. Because okay. you see, Christmas is coming. Yeah. I was just talking to Sami a few minutes ago. The temperature in the country seems to be building up. Whether it is due to election, mm-hmm. pre-election, um, heebie-jeebies, or it is due to end of year, yeah. whatever it is, there's a temple building up, and we might as well sell some stuff in there. Yeah, most definitely. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's an opportune time for many businesses Precisely. To, to fill the gap that has been lost as a result of COVID. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There was something you said in that conversation last week yes. which sort of stuck with me. Okay. And I'm just going to start with that, and okay. you'll sort of take us into a recap of what we did last week All for right. those of our listeners yes. who um, were not able to join us. Mm-hmm. Some people also sent in some questions. I know when we start with the interaction section, exactly. you will start with those questions yes. as well. But there was something you said that when you're recruiting... Um, and last week we we dwelt on recruiting, coaching, and, and training. And training yeah. um, today we're going to be talking about enablement in exactly. a few minutes. But you said something. You said gut feeling yeah. is not something to go with. And oftentimes you watch videos, training videos. You watch all of those. You know, read all of those material, and they say at some point when you've ticked every box, go with your gut. You know, you you hear that a lot. But you bro- you you broke it down for us, and you helped us understand it. And you were scientific about it also. Yeah. There were boxes to tick. Yeah. To make sure that yeah. you are marking and measuring it right. Exactly. And that was super helpful. Yes. Can you just do a quick recap for us, for those of our listeners who missed out last week? Okay. And then we go straight into today's conversation. Right. So, so I, I said that uh, one of the mistakes that many businesses do is to recruit based on gut feelings, mm. right? Uh, yes, we, we can all see somebody uh, and then feel that this guy can sell mm. or this lady is a, is a good fit for but usually, uh, that that feeling is not uh, validated mm-hmm. when the person comes into the room. You know, you find out there are gaps. Uh, you find out that uh, the competencies are weak. You find out that the sales DNA is not aligned to the kind of industry uh, you, are, you are selling to. That's one of the reasons. Yes, gut feeling. But when you have done everything you've used all the tools so this is one way it goes we talked about using the the culture of the organization we talked about uh, allocating 10 percent to that allocate about uh, 30 percent to behavioral interviews where you ask the person questions regarding the experience etc and we talked about another 30 percent for uh, using the sales assess- assessment tools right right and then we, the last 30% we mm-hmm. said for references. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now, the 10%, where is a fit, cultural fit? Okay. At that point, when all the tools are being used, the behavioral interview, the uh, uh, sales assessment tools are being used, and the person is a fit, right? you can come to a conclusion. At, at that point, your 10% to see whether the person is a fit with the organization. Uh, there are certain things you need to measure the person with, okay? Uh, how your your organization works, the kind of pressure you work within, the kind of customers that you get. So at that point, uh, there's that is more subjective, right? It is, it is not very objective. So that's where you have 
people's preferences coming in there. So the discretion. Uh, yes. So if you had people at the end, two candidates, and you want one, and probably all of them scored uh, A plus, mm -hmm. at that point in time you are now going to check to see what are the things you have in common mm. uh, would this kind of person fit into our culture. And that is like your gut feeling. So it shouldn't be more than 10%. Yes. I mean, it shouldn't be more than. But just to see somebody and assume that. Yeah. You know, at times when I, I sit on interview panels, you know, and you see some of the uh, candidates, you get the impression and they can tell you all the right things. Okay. <laughs> They can exhibit certain things, but when you you use the assessment tool, you begin to see gaps. It shows and the, the gaps. And the, the beauty about the assessment tool too is that if it is gamed by the person, mm -hmm. it will flag it and say, yes, this guy seems to be suitable. It's a go, but you need to flag these issues, and you can go back. And then the references then would validate everything. The guy said they were selling uh, 100 cartons a, a month, mm. true or false. And that's an integrity issue, mm -hmm. you understand. So as much as possible, because the cost of having the wrong person in a row, right? Is enormous. It's enormous. Plus the opportunity cost, the Essentially. sale that you would have been making. The business the, lost. The business loss. So it's... it's, it's so there's a way to do this right, recruiting right, right, right. for salespeople. For salespeople. There were three questions you asked last yeah. week, and I'll just ask them again before we yeah. start going into today's okay. conversation. Yeah. And so um, for those of us who are listening, just a sort of self internal self-assessment, if you like. If you want to share your comments with us also, you can do that on 0244340437. So here's the first question. If you own any business of any kind, ask yourself, how many of you, which is, do you feel that 100% with 100% certainty that your sales team has the right people, has the right skills to achieve your sales plan? Yeah. Do you feel that the sales team you have, with 100% certainty, they have the right people and they have the right skills to achieve your sales plan? Yeah. Question two, do, you current, so, so what, do your current salespersons have the sales skills, beliefs, and sales DNA to win today and in the future? The answer is yes, no, or I'm not sure. Again, it's self-introspection, so you answer this for yourself. Do you think that the current uh, crop of salespeople you have have this, the required skills, the required beliefs, and the required sales DNA to win today and in the future? And then the last question was, how many hours per month does your sales team or organization spend coaching one salesperson? One to two hours, three to five, zero hours, or I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> so answer these questions first. So let's talk about what we're doing today. Yes. Sales enablement. Yes. What's that about? Well, it's, it's all about the arsenal that your salespeople need to go to the battlefield. That's how I can, that's the picture I can paint. Mm -hmm. So can you imagine you've recruited uh, new soldiers to go and fight <laughs> to go to battle and they don't have the arsenal, they don't have the armory, mm. the equipment, then work done is zero. So that's basically what we are going to talk about today. What are the kind of tools you can use to make your salespeople become successful at what they do? Mm. That's basically what we're going to look at today. Right. If you've just joined us, this is Master Class here on your Superstation Joy 99.7. We continue our conversation here on sales with Maoli Oklu. Do stay tuned, and we'll get interactive at some point. Ahead of that, if you want to send us a comment, you can do that on 0244-340-437. Maoli, talk to us about sales enablement. Yes, yeah, so the sales enablement simply uh, means that we all the resources, right, all the tools, that an organization will make available to its salespeople to be effective and efficient at selling. Okay, so there are times you find sales organizations saying, "Well, we don't have the tools, so how do you expect to achieve?" And these tools need to be well thought through, and it's not every tool that is suitable for any sales organization. So the benefit basically is it helps in productivity. 
now if you enter a lot of sales organization one of the challenges is that how do we improve the question they ask how do we improve productivity of our sales people right uh, and it's a language that the insurance guys use a lot what's your production for this week <laughs> what's your production for that month mm -hmm. that that's where production actually uh, is what drives uh, the insurance industry for us and it's the same for every organization secondly it helps sales people to contribute to the organization in terms of deals they will do because yes you may be productive but at the end of the day the the contribution in terms of of the value of sales you are doing uh, are you discounting for instance which then uh, gives your your company low productivity so those, those are the benefits okay so i'll talk about three three areas of sales and enablement and the first one is technology the second one content uh, marketing content and the third information and knowledge so let's start with the first one which is technology just like every industry <laughs> these days they will say go agile <laughs> work in a digital, digitized, digitized etc but the first one that if your organization doesn't have one we have to consider is to have a CRM okay, okay. that word is banded around at times in some organization it means a tool to to manage the customer service role the existing customers but here the CRM is, is, is the most powerful tool that any sales organization can have because it gives you visibility. What does CRM mean, uh, mean? Sorry, Customer Relationship Management System. Right. Okay. So it gives you visibility into how your sales operation is going. So think about it. How can a pilot fly blind without the panels, the dashboards? You know, so there are times I call, I say voodoo, <laughs> voodoo, uh, how do you call it, forecasting, mm -hmm. you know. And how do you know you're going to make a sale next month? How do you know how much you get? It is the CRM that gives you the platform to be able to, to do that. So the CRM one, what it does is that it records information about your prospects in the, what we call the sales pipeline. So this is essentially a, a kind of software. Yes, it's essentially that is required. So yes, yeah. it's a software. Exactly. Right. And uh, some people have been able to even use Excel, right, mm. to create a, a simple CRM because the business is not big, mm. right. But it has to be information on which stage mm -hmm. of the, the 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 sales pipeline we currently find a prospect. A right. prospect means a potential customer or an existing customer mm. for that matter. Second, what does it do? What stage of the process are they in? So I'll give you a typical example. If you have, let's say, a four-step sales process for your organization, and you say, okay, first meeting. Your first step is meeting, okay? A, a, a meeting. The second step is to do a presentation. Third step is to negotiate. First step is to, uh, how do you call it, close the deal. However, the guy has met, your salesperson has met somebody for the first time to introduce, introduce themselves, so the introduction meeting. So the intro introductory meeting, after that introductory meeting, you, you have to assign some milestone to it. Mm -hmm. Okay, I've met the decision maker. So on a scale of one to 10, right? my chances of closing this business is maybe at 10 percent 10 percent yeah all right but then if the guy does that and comes to tell you that at the end of the month from that particular potential customer he's going to bring 10,000 100,000 Ghana CDs then you should be asking yourself how is that possible second question do people in our industry take decisions in one month cycles two-month cycles, three-month cycles, which means that the organization has to know its sales cycle, right? And that's one of the reasons why we miss a lot of 
a lot of uh, forecasting because we are not getting it right. We, we don't know at what stage a salesperson is at with a particular potential customer and that can create trouble for us. The next thing it does is that you get information about the prospect as well. There are times where business leaders are scratching their heads about uh, just to find the data of potential customers is a, is a problem. Okay, so the CRM now there are so many. Some are on your mobile, etc. That has geofencing. In other words, it can it can restrict the salesperson within a particular geographical area, you can see where they've gone so that you hold them accountable, right? Because the, the, the only resource that the sales team has is time and money. So if the guy is on the field, you must be able to see where they are located at a particular time. If they finish their meeting, they must be able to you must be able to have a system that says, well, meeting has been completed, Right. These are the discussions we had without coming back to the office to complete that, you know. So that's the the, the thing about CRM. Very uh, powerful. Let me just add this, you know, because we're all learning here, and I and I, I was just nodding when you were talking because it's such a powerful thing you just shared. And what we're saying is that we're moving from the era of doing things by rote. Yes. by learning and by chewing the formulas and yes. by going step one, yes. step two, step three, exactly. to an era of analytics. Exactly. And and what we're saying is that you don't need man hours to sit down for two weeks to pour through material to be able to do. There are systems put together today that are intelligent enough to analyze the raw data you put in there. Okay. So all we're saying is that put in the data. How many customers do you have? Put it there. Exactly. How often do you review them? Put it there. Exactly. What's your sales cycle? Put it there. Yeah. What is the process through you go uh, yeah. process you go through to acquire one customer? Put it there. Exactly. Now the system is measured to say to give you certain analytics. So, exactly. for example, in the week, it can tell you what has your progress been in a week. Exactly. How many customers have you called? Exactly. What are the prospects? Exactly. You should have achieved X exactly. as a percentage of the total time exactly. you have. So this is where you are. Exactly. Can you make it at the end of the time, exactly. or can you not make it? Will you exactly. miss a runway? You know, and the IT guys use this term, active, active. Yes. So if I'm borrowing it in sales, mm. this is the point you were making, exactly. that you want to be together with your sales team, not just receiving reports. No. So active active will be when they are in the field, mm. every activity that they undertake, they enter onto some kind of handheld exactly. device. Exactly. It feeds into the main software that you're sitting on exactly. and it tells you so you are actively working with them. Exactly. And you see it. You don't you don't wait at the end of your month or at the end, the end of your day to read piles and piles and piles of reports. Yes. You've, and it's all brilliant the point you're making. You've you know? touched on a very important part. You said you don't wait until the end of the uh, month. So that's what we call lagging indicators. Mm. At the end of the month, I, visit, I, I sold X amount. But the real the, data. Com the companies that actually <laughs> win are those who understand and can interpret the leading indicators. Exactly. How many customers has the guy visited, the salesperson visited in a month or in a week? At what stage is each of these people? What progress are they making? Mm -hmm. And the beauty about this is that it can give you an idea of forecasting. So if I have, Actually. if I, if your sales people have, let's say, ten, talking to ten people mm -hmm. in a month, and let's say the sales cycle is one month, ten people, and at the, by middle of the month you find that four, three of them are at the last stage negotiation for a potential twenty thousand Ghana CD mm -hmm. deal. Right, you know that those deals are going to close by the end of the month if the right. Uh, you even know where to focus your energy e exactly. because you know where your pipelines are. Exactly, but then so you can have that. Then you can say that okay, five of them are still at introductory stage. So we are not expecting anything from. So after six months, if you are still at introductory stage, you can make the decision and say, do I pursue? Do I perceive or is the salesperson actually pursuing? Exactly. You understand? And the other thing is that you find salespeople who can do the in introductory part, get it to negotiation, but the business stalls. That could even be an indicator as a, a sales uh, manager. Of that a skills gap. Of a skills gap. You know, so there's, there are so many opportunities. You sit down and you can say, wow, and we are not mining there. Yes. It also helps you to find those who are 
who are putting in junk into the seal system, who are not qualified you know, people. I wish we could just talk about this alone the yeah, whole time. Yeah. But but I'm just going to say this in summary because you need to move on to the others. That What we're saying is that stop throwing money at a situation without understanding it. Exactly. Get involved in your sales. Yes. Things have changed today. Yes. Revolutionize it. Get a software. Get a consultant. Talk to them. Be actively involved mm -hmm. in your sales yes. process. Yes. That's the only way you can get results because you can only expect what you inspect. Exactly. If you're not looking at it, it's not getting done. Exactly. And like we've talked about, you can see shortfalls. Exactly. Maybe the person selling can has pushed that to a point. He's stuck. He needs to go to the next level. Maybe an executive level involvement needs to be done. Exactly. Maybe it's not even a viable lead to chase. Maybe, you know, your, your window is so short, if you don't push it and close it within a certain period, you're going to lose it. Exactly. There are lots of things that can be done with the things. use of technology a, in a your sales. A lot of things. And I'm sure people are out there say, but CRMs are expensive. But let me oh, tell but they're simple apps. Let, let, let me tell you what it is. Yes. I mean, there are CRMs that gives you a free... A free uh, usage mm. up to a certain level. Can we give some examples? I mean, from your experience. Initially, you mentioned that um, people, your IT guys can help you build a simple dashboard yes, using okay. Access or Excel. Yes, yes. But otherwise, you can just go to Google and find out, and I find suppose. Out. Yes, some of them simple. will get you a simple one because they say it for five people. You can. And you, are not, you know, most of those CRMs have been built for huge enterprise mm. Mm. organizations. So, I mean, they are freemium. Is good for you mm -hmm, and me. Mm -hmm. So if you are a small business, you can use their freemium, which is for life. Uh, HubSpot, for instance, mm -hmm. has a freemium that you can use as a good CRM, mm -hmm. free for life, unless you want to begin to play at a certain level. level. You understand? Because they just want to hook you. And once you understand the process flow exactly. at, at, a, at a basic exactly. level, exactly. you can build on it and become better. Exactly. Stop doing this thing manually. Exactly. Stop reinventing the wheel. Yes, Somebody has done it for you, and say, it's for free. Yes, as they say, you go tired. Let's move on. Technology. <laughs> <laughs> then, then the next one is uh, content, uh, marketing content. Marketing content, and right. When we talk about marketing content, uh, we are not talking about your leaflets, promotional items, etc. But we are talking as, about tools that will help salespeople, websites, okay, blog posts, right, uh, case studies, and that is where I, I, I have a passion for, and that has got to do with um, uh, uh, social proof, because you must be able to prove to people that Yao has used this product, and this was the situation in which he was in, and this is, this is where he finds himself now, after we solved the, the problem. Because that is the Molly, you know, <laughs> I'm sorry to take us back, but I've been one of those people who have always thought yeah. until this conversation yeah. that sales is meant for some people only. I can understand what you've talked about. Yes. I mean, the right skill, the yes. sales DNA. Yes. But I think that if we have all of this information, yes. it will make the approach to sales quite easier than we have always thought it is. Exactly. You won't be afraid of being rejected because if you have information and you're talking to the person, and you make them see that they need your product. Most definitely. Yeah. And you're offering it at value. Then the information becomes power, doesn't it? It, it becomes. That that's all it is. I'm so I'm so passionate about this yes. thing this afternoon because we need to understand that when you have data, when you have analytics, when you have trend analysis, yes. you can go to the person and say, Your business is about to go down. Mm -hmm. I can help you. And they say, What do you mean my business is about to? and show them the numbers. Exactly. There's something that people understand, business owners understand. Mm -hmm. And it's numbers. Yeah. If you show them that their numbers are not doing well and this is what's going to happen and it's backed by empirical data, trend analysis. I was talking to a gentleman just two days ago and he said to me, he says, Yao, in, from January to date, yes. we've talked about COVID and COVID and how businesses are going down. Do you know how much money people, the internet has traded for Ghana alone? Yeah. And it's, it's yeah. in various businesses. It's over $100 million. Yes, yes, people yes. have sat here and traded and bought things on the internet exactly. and shipped things. Exactly. Over $100 million. Yeah, exactly. And we're talking about businesses going down. Yeah. So and that's it, trend it, analysis. Yes, it's just got to do with a mindset change. You know, you need to shift that. You know, because, for instance, this content uh, uh, thing I'm talking about, for instance, case studies, etc. All you need to do, what it does is that it does the talking for you, right? It reduces how often you are going to follow up because mm. then you have let's say, a testimonial, and the testimonial must be verifiable mm -hmm. anyway, you understand. So that is, and 
and for different segments of your market different types of customers use cases mm -hmm. you understand and different challenges that they faced that is very important and this has to be provided by the marketing mm -hmm. department which mm -hmm. means that marketing and sales have to align on this together yeah then the last point i want to raise on this importance of the marketing content is that at the early stage stages of the sales process for instance the introductory stage and then uh, 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 going through the middle to identifying needs etc at the introductory stage such tools positions you as an expert because customers want to buy from people who they perceive as knowledgeable in their in in their domain right and then it also helps to foster a good relationship so that was the issue, the, the points regarding marketing content. Mm. Then let me quickly look at information and knowledge. This is the, the software. <laughs> you know, that's the software, <laughs> you know. And when I talk about it, I, I, information and knowledge, very often product knowledge is the alpha and omega, yeah. right? It is the foundation, and I always emphasize that but you cannot successfully sell knowing only your product, okay? You need to give your salespeople other information and knowledge that will help them. So some of the areas is that they must know the company's sales process. Mm. Otherwise, they'll be selling differently. So think about it. You go to a church or a function, there's a choir, and each person is singing from a different page. That's chaotic. You will not get a consistent results. So that is one information clear. And I know organizations who take their salespeople through the sales process very often and educate them why it's important to follow the process. Second point, we must also provide them with the buyers and our target markets. At times we assume that Sales people know who we are selling to, but it has to be clarified. So, for instance, there are companies, a company who want to identify three segments and the behavior of the buyers. If you do not understand that, your sales people do not understand that, then they will be fighting blind. The next point is, do we understand, do your sales people understand the, the pain? So, yeah, you are in general services, right? What are your pains? So if anybody wants to sell a solution to you, right, the person must understand the pain that you go through as you in your role as a general uh, manager for general services. Without understanding that, the person cannot connect with you and identify your pains and then solve those problems. So that's another information. The other information is that we need to know who our competitors are. Provide. Uh, I, I did some work for a, a client where there was competitive information that was being supplied to the salespeople every morning and industry <laughs> information. <laughs> Believe you me, it was only one out of 10 salespeople who was using it. And obviously, the guy's sales figures were, were, were more than the rest combined you know so that has to be important and then finally coaching coaching mm. i mean that is the only way you have to reinforce the knowledge and then the skills so if you don't have a culture of coaching in your sales organization then you have big gaps in your 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 ability to give your sales people the arsenal to try to win the world. Some very, very wonderful thoughts there. I know that we're going to be getting interactive and we're going to be dwelling a, a bit more on some of the points which have been shared. Yes. We'll be getting interactive shortly. You can send us your comments on 0244340437. We'll be opening the phone lines right after this. 
master classes and sessions, and you can interact with us via Facebook at Joy Business or at Joy 99.7 FM. And if you tweet, the handle is at Joy 997 FM. Don't forget to hashtag Masterclass. You can also send us a text on 1422 across all networks or join the WhatsApp conversation on 0244 340437. And our facilitators will address your concerns. Attention, everyone, class is in progress. Welcome back to the show. This is Masterclass. Masterclass is brought to us by Goyle. Goyle, they say good energy. Goyle, yenara yedia. So going cashless has never been this convenient and exciting. Goyle's e-payment systems are now compatible with G-Link and the national payment platform. Now you can use your G-Link card on Goyle POS machines to purchase fuel. GH-Link cards offers additional payment options for fuel purchases at Goyle stations in addition to the Go card. Every fuel purchased is recorded automatically on your monthly bank statement, helping cardholders track and manage their expenses. So go ahead and use your GH Link card to buy fuel and all lubricants from any of Goyle's over 400 stations across Ghana. Go cashless and protect yourself and stick to all the COVID-19 protocols in these times. Goyle, they say good energy, Goyle. Yenara, yeah, yeah. Phone lines are now open. You can pick up that phone. Give us a call on 0302216541. That's 0302216541. You can also send us your comments on 0244340437. Phone lines are now open. We're interactive now. Mauli, yeah. you, you, you shared some very wonderful thoughts, but you know, while we're waiting for our first call to come yes. through, I just wanted you to sort of hit a bit more for me, if you like. I think my first call is through. Um, one second. Good afternoon. You're welcome to Masterclass. Good afternoon, yo. You have a question. Good afternoon, my brother. I want to from your, your guest. Yes. What are some of the, the free CRMs you can mention so that we can use um, for starters? Brilliant, brilliant. Please keep listening. We'll try and answer that question. I mean, I was expecting that question. I mean, mm-hmm. because people need information, and information, like we have always said, is power. So he's asking, um, where can we get access to some of these free... Well, I mean, just Google. I mean, one of them that I can give you, I use that myself mm. because I have a small team and I, you, it's, it's not important to invest in such big ones. Well, the, the big boy in uh, CRM is uh, Salesforce. Bloody expensive, <laughs> right? But uh, check out uh, HubSpot. Right, HubSpot. H-U-B-S-P-O-T. I think they have a platform that does inbound marketing, but they do have uh, a free for life sales uh, CRM that you can use up to five or six or seven of your 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 salespeople. But the most important thing is that you need to first of all have your sales process clearly defined before you can benefit from that. So once you have it clearly defined, the software will ask you to indicate your steps and once you do your uh, you customize your steps you are good to go but the most important thing is that people must use it uh, there are other tools that are handheld crms that you can softwares that you can get i don't have some you just google i mean you can contact me through uh Yao later on and no i mean straight and i think you can, you can go ahead i mean if people want to find you after this show and get some consulting information. How do they reach you? How do they reach Salesmark? Oh, uh, Salesmark. Just yeah. call my number zero two four four two seven nine three six eight. Okay. If you can just repeat that slowly. Zero two four four two seven nine three six eight. Okay. And then they'll get to speak directly to you. Yes, I mean, okay. Yes. We'll put that phone number out again before we go. But by all means, if you need some sales help, sales consulting, somebody to help you put your sales operation right, like we've we've said here on the show, give Maori a call and they'll be able to help. Phone lines are now open, 0302216541. Pick up that phone, give us a call. Let's share some thoughts on how you can make your sales better. It's getting to the end of the year. How can you stop throwing good money at a situation that is not scientific? You can't measure it. You don't know what you're getting out of it, and you're upset all the time because the numbers are not coming in. It's because we can make it a bit more scientific than you're doing now. And in scientific, by scientific, I mean we can make it more measurable. Yeah. And go down to the details of it, look at the trend analysis, the data available, and make it a bit more profitable. I've got this on social media from Nogbe in Tessa. Nogbe says, good afternoon. I'm so grateful um, for this discussion this afternoon. I've seen most of the companies now, and they... Okay, okay. Um, essentially, what he's saying is that the education must go to the CEOs, and they must take their 
sales people seriously in many companies. Is, is you, there, do you want to comment on that? Is he a prophet? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I found that that's a, a major issue. I mean, so uh, there are there are some ideas to engage CEOs because you must understand. Uh, you can't assume that uh, everybody and the, the the position of a lot of sales managers in this country is that they are playing a role of selling. You know, they they are expected to to lead the team, just sell, sell, sell. You know, so uh, they don't actually have the time. They don't free themselves to do the strategic things that are important. Mm. You know, I know a sales manager of a company in, based in Tema. Every Monday morning, he spends an hour coaching. The sales meeting is not an inquisition. Mm-hmm. It's a cabal. Yes, it's a one-on-one with each salesperson using the uh, CRM, right, and their sales, right, and then there's a coaching component in it. Why did they, didn't we close this sale? Why did we lose? So they do a win a win loss analysis because you must also understand why you lost the deal. And it's even so revealing for the salesperson himself exactly. when he finds out that this is a standing of my work. Exactly. You know, there's, there's something about analytics. When they show you what you've done yeah. and you now understand it mm-hmm. and understand that, look, so for the past two months I've been going out, I've been working, I've spoken to these people, but my I've not gone beyond this point exactly. on this one. Then you find out, but I could have done it. So the next time you go out, you're going out with more information and you're armed. Exactly. So, I mean, you couldn't, you couldn't be on point yeah. more than that. The Sarah on social media from Winneba. Yeah. Sarah says, good day, uh, a very good and educated session with your guest. And he's very brilliant. Maoli, compliments to you. Well Thank done you. to Maoli. Sarah from Winneba. Right. I've got a question for you. Um, okay. Numbers to call again, 0302-216-541. You want to give Maoli a call or give us a call here on the show. Maoli will answer your question very quickly on how you can make your sales process and your sales teams better no matter what you do whether it's a service is a product is tangible is intangible you're selling it you may think that you're doing it well now it hasn't had to get more information but if you're also having problems give us a call let's share some thoughts 0302-216-541 or you can send us a comment on 0244-340-437 you spoke about competitor information now how important is that to a successful sales process (laughs) <laughs> I know I know it's a thesis question, but you try and answer it for us here on the show. <laughs> well, I, I mean, one of the most important things in selling is, right f- starting from scratch, is what is your value proposition? I hear a lot of people talk about value proposition, but uh, it's not real value proposition. So I'll give you a whole way to do I think I'm going to call on the line. Hold right. on for me. Good afternoon. You're welcome to Masterclass. Your name, where you're calling from? Yeah, good afternoon. I'm Jacob. Talk to me, Jacob. Calling from Miss Lagan. Right, Jacob. Talk to me. Um, actually, I, I've, been, I've been listening to your program, and uh, I'm, 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 much, um, I'm grateful for you, know, you bringing up this program. Right. But, you know, I have a, I have a little problem that I want um, your guy to help me, help me out. Go ahead. Um, I've just started a, a candle business. Right. Okay. And then um, I, I, I've just made my first sample, but I'm trying to pop into the um, business market and then see how best we can. So I don't know if he can help me out as he does. Okay, please keep listening. We'll try and we'll try and react to your point. He's just started a candle business, and he wants to know how to break into the market. I've got another caller on the line. I think let's see. Um, good afternoon. You're welcome to Masterclass. Good afternoon, Yo. Emmanuel, I'm back again. Oh, Emmanuel, Emmanuel talk to me. <laughs> yes. Um, can your guest help us to understand the sales process proper? And is it is it adaptable to every organization, or is it one size fits all thing? Right. It's a good question. Please keep listening, and we'll try and answer that. Second question. Um, I think we'll answer those two questions. So let's start from from the last one. Okay. All right. Sales approach or sales okay. process is it adaptable? Well, a sales process has to be first of all um, aligned to the way your buyer buys. Without that, you you not you will not be in sync with your customer. So it's not just company specific; it is customer specific. Yes, you can have a generic sales process. You know, right. some people will have maybe a four step, a three step. If it's a complex product, it, it, it's it's much more longer. Mm. But the shorter you keep it, uh, I would recommend anything 
uh, if it has to be long, it is four, five, up to six. That's okay, but some people have long. But to answer the question, first of all, you need to understand your customer's journey. Mm -hmm. How do they buy? So a typical example I use in radio, radio sales, is that, okay, you know, for instance, before you, you approach a corporate organization, you must find out when is their budget year. So if their budget year starts from January to, how do you call it, uh, December, then they must be planning by a certain time. You know the processes that you go through. So first of all, you need to understand how they buy. Mm -hmm. And the typical example I use is the tombstone seller. Did I mention it the last time? I think you did briefly. Yes. So I said, for instance, that you need to clearly know how the people buy. They, we buy after one year. So tombstones are bought after one year, right? <laughs> yeah. So your steps is that your step one is identify your uh, people who need a tombstone in a year. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you'll be prospecting. In, in a year's time, before one year, you start calling them. Mm -hmm. That's a two-step process mm -hmm. because the person knows how the people buy, yeah. right? Yeah. If it is a three-step process, okay, introduce yourself, demonstrate, and then close, then that is it. Mm -hmm. So it's, to answer the question, it is very peculiar to your own organization, what works for you. And what it is you're selling. And what it is that you are selling. Okay. We're running out of time. Let's try and answer uh, the first person's question, the candle uh, business. Well, the, the candle, I don't, I, it will be very difficult to answer this question. My reason is that who is it targeting? First question I get to mind, who is your target market? Who is your target market? You understand? Uh, so is it a, a, a aromatherapy candles? So he can reach out to you. Let's yes, put your number yes, out exactly. again. You can do that. Let's put your number out yeah, again. Right. Um, zero two four four uh -huh. two seven nine three six eight. Okay, let's have your take out for the conversation today. We've I've run out of time so quickly. Okay, so by take out for, for our conversation and, today and what we're doing and what we're doing um, next week. Yes, by take out for the conversation is that one, you need to use technology to accelerate your business and be more efficient and effective. Two, you need information. That your salespeople will use. It's like the software, right? And then three, you need the collaterals, the the marketing support that will, will help you achieve your your sales. And next week we'll be looking at things to do with how to motivate the uh, the staff, uh, the sales force, uh, compensation, and it's, and that's the. Uh, one area where there's a lot of I'm sure the salespeople will be excited. If you're a salesperson, you know a salesperson, don't miss next week's edition of Masterclass. We're going, to, we're going to be talking about all of the remuneration, the motivation, and all the things that help yeah. you to yeah. do your job. Well, this has been Masterclass right oh, here on the Superstation right. Joy 99.7. Next week, we're back on your radio, same time, with yet another exciting edition. My name is Yabanafo. I have been your host for the show. Up next, we continue with The Ignition with Sami Forsen. Thank you so much for listening, and see you same time next week.